Today I'm going to share with you how ChatGPT made me switch from Google Chrome to Microsoft Edge and using Bing instead of Google. This one is big. Google Chrome is actually quite new. It has only been around for the last 15 years or so. I just want to highlight some of the browsers I've used for a long time. From Mosaic, Netscape, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, you name it. Am I really that old? It all started off with Firefox, which I used for many years and mostly because it had the most amount of features. It had like an extensive ecosystem of extensions that allowed you to customize your browser. But boy, it was really, really slow. Two hours later. Then meet Google Chrome. <coughs> Google Chrome was developed by Google and they highly promoted this through their Google search engine and it was really, really fast. It had an entirely new engine, came with its own extension source. So most of the developers who had already like made an extension for Firefox just made a Chrome version. So it was really easy and useful for me to just switch over from Firefox and have much better speed, much fewer RAM usage and much better experience overall. Now at the time when I was using Firefox, it wasn't actually the most popular browser in the world. The most popular browser was in fact Internet Explorer. Why was that the case? Because Microsoft has developed their own browser and they just shipped this with every single Microsoft Windows installation. Most people were using Windows that didn't have the tech skill to just install another browser. It was really easy for Microsoft to become the most dominant power in the internet and having the entire market monopoly in terms of web browsers. To be honest, Internet Explorer was always a horrible browser, especially version 6. At that time, I was doing a lot of web development, like creating some websites for myself and other people. There was one thing that was really bugging the hell out of me when it comes to Internet Explorer. You would create a website which is perfectly following the rules and it works perfect in Firefox and it works perfect in Google Chrome. And then you try to open it in Internet Explorer and the site is entirely broken. That was a real pain. And um, even worse, they would break every single website from every new version. They, they would just go nuts. Like there were Wild West times. Every version would break like a new website. So people had to write custom code and customize. Hey, if you have Internet Explorer, version 4 write this code if it's 5 this alternative code if it's version 6 this entire blob of text if it's version 7 so you end up like spending 10 percent of your time creating a website and then 90 percent of your time optimizing it for internet explorer and why did you just like uh, say i don't care about Internet explorer because they had the dominant market share so you had to kind of do it if you want the majority of people to use your website like I didn't like to use it, it didn't have any extensions, it was slow, it was sloppy, it used a lot of memory, it was a pain to create any type of websites for it, it was really like a bad browser. Now long story short, Google became the most dominant search engine on the planet and they first started pushing out like a search bar for Internet Explorer and eventually pushing everyone to install Google Chrome. And so what happened was that Internet Explorer lost market share over the years and Google Chrome became the most dominant player on the planet. Now Microsoft knew about the limitations of Internet Explorer and at some point in time the team realized this is not really the w way to go. They said like okay let's commit to the standards and like create a better Internet Explorer that follows the rules so internet websites look the same across whatever browser or operating system you are using it. So they started working on it, but they had a really big issue because what happened was like when people first created the internet, a lot of enterprise customers started creating their own applications that only worked in their own intranet. Like let's think of banks or something like this. They create the entire system, how people can create accounts or like make transfers of in terms of money. And, and all of those systems, they're like really, they take ages to build. So by the time that the bank application have fully adjusted to creating web applications in their own on intranet by that time we already like skipped like 10 browser versions those apps were optimized to work on really really old versions of internet explorer so all the corporate customers they just wanted to keep the old internet explorer versions they didn't want to have a new browser which would break everything they insisted on keeping this failed browser alive for ages now Microsoft tried really, really hard to skip out of this ecosystem by developing Edge. Initially, they used their own engine. To be honest, the engine wasn't that bad. It was quite modern and wouldn't break. Most of the website was very, very fast and sometimes even faster than some of the Chrome browsers at the time. But it still had a different engine, so it wasn't compatible with the vast extension system that existed for Firefox and Google Chrome. So for me, that was a no-no. Now, five years ago, at about 
about Edge, abandon that plan. They said, like, let's skip this. Like, we don't have to build our own engines. There is already, like, a good engine on the market, which has a really good uh, open source operating system. Is Chromium. That's the open source version of Google Chrome that Google has uh, opened up to everyone who wants to use it. And there is a lot of developers actively developing this and optimizing that. It's a really, really good engine. So what Microsoft then decided, let's just take the Chromium engine and build this into our Internet Explorer and then build our own system on top of that. So finally, we have access to the entire ecosystem of Google Chrome. Like you can use any extension that works on Google Chrome and you can use that in the Microsoft Store and install it. You can even install extension right there from the Google Chrome Store. Now, that was a really great step, but essentially for me, it was kind of like, okay, it's now the same as Google Chrome. Why should I switch? I already like know Chrome, like I've already installed all extensions. And so I still didn't switch. Now, fast forward to November 2022. This year would change everything. What happened? OpenAI released ChatGPT, an advanced model that was built on top of their already existing GPT 3.5 language model. And it would show the world what would be possible when it comes to AI and processing natural language. Now, you may not know this, but Microsoft has heavily invested into OpenAI. They had like an initial investment of $1 billion. And just recently, they announced like another investment of over $10 billion over a couple of years to further help OpenAI develop this technology. Now, what is new about ChatGPT versus like the underlying model GPT 3.5? Now, it's essentially using the same language model, but what it has done is has created a user interface, so to say, which is much better at understanding what is the intent of the person asking a question or making a task request. So it's much better at understanding what the user wants. It was a really big issue to make GPT-3 give you content that would be usable. Prompt design required so much more work and much more precise tuning parameters to get any useful content out of it. So ChatGPT essentially has solved this problem by creating a top layer on top of GPT-3, which allows it to understand the user prompt and convert it into like a very highly efficient internal prompt that the language model can execute perfectly. It has grown up in a way like imagine like GPT-3 being a toddler who requires a lot of patient and repetitive commands and a lot of very, very precise questions if you want to make it do something. And GPT-3 is essentially like a much older version of a child which understands much more, it understands context. It can even give you relatively useful answers without context. Obviously, you're going to get the best answers if you give it a lot of context. And there is a lot of really cool things in terms of prompt design that you can learn about. I've tested this like for the last of months and I've like figured out like a lot of cool ways how you can design your prompts to get really optimal output and get the most out of ChatGPT. You can ask it questions, you can ask it to do research, you can help it craft like a content strategy, you can ask it to outline a specific topic, it can help you write entire articles, social media posts, it can help you rewrite your LinkedIn profile, it can help you write a job application based on your CV. It has such incredible features when it comes to understanding and processing language and creating really really useful output is really revolutionary. We're just scratching the surface. It's just the beginning. This is going to improve exponentially over the next couple of years. And it's going to revolutionize a lot of industries, a lot of industries, new industries going to pop up. It's, it's going to change the way we do so many things. And it's just really exciting to be here. This is basically the invention of the internet all over again. And you're just here at the early stages and you're seeing it unfold in real time in front of your own eyes. It's so cool. I started creating a ton of content about it, how to use it, like what are the best prompts, what is the best structure. I'm going to take some of my best resources. I'm going to put the link down in the description and in the pinned comment below. So it's really easy for you to get started. Anyway, let's talk about Microsoft Edge and Bing again. Now, Bing recently released a new feature and it's called Chat. What they basically have done is they have taken ChatGPT's engine and they put it into the Bing search engine. Now, for me, I wasn't really using Bing. I felt Bing was a really bad search engine for many reasons. It's not as good as Google because 
because it's very literal when it comes to search terms. Like if I search for, let's say, I want to have some fries, it wouldn't be able to show me a recipe for chips. Like that's the British version of fries. You have to be really literal in terms of like how you want to rank for it. Like if you want to rank for fries, you have to use fries. If you want to rank for fries and the chips, you have to use both words simultaneously in your article. It can make it sound really odd. If you want to rank on Bing, you have to basically do keyword staffing and write SEO text. That, that sound really horrible. That don't sound like a normal person would do. You would insert the keyword every other sentence. Every time they say I wanted to rank for ChatGPT, I would say today we're going to talk about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is this amazing system. ChatGPT does this and this. ChatGPT can do this. It sounds totally unnatural. And that's one of the reasons like I have my own websites and I write a lot of articles mostly about content marketing and like how to take advantage of using LinkedIn for your content marketing and how to create your own YouTube channel, how to do blogging well. And I want to write my text in a normal way that actually sounds readable when people looking at it. So it should sound like a real nice book that someone can sit down and read out the book. I don't want to have this sound like an SEO engine where every third word is like whatever keyword I'm trying to use for. But if you want to rank for Bing, that was really necessary. And as a consequence, because of this behavior, all of the top search results on Bing are either not as good because uh, it's not able to identify the article which actually contain good content because they're not over optimized for keywords. And the articles that do rank, they just sound mechanical. Like they have every third word is like the exact word that you typed in. Every headline contains the keyword you search for. And really frustrating if you want to read this. So Google already had like working on like some language models for a really long time. This is one of the reasons why it's able to understand like the content, like what is the, the value of reading a certain article. And it was also able to um, basically punish people for over optimizing content. So when someone would write some keyword stuffed uh, articles, it would just downrank them in favor of a more readable article. Because of that, it was much easier for me to rank on Google. And also the search results were much better and much more relevant because I would get the text that actually helped me, not the text that have been over optimized for SEO as on Bing. Now, what has changed when it comes to Bing? Now, Bing has been busy. They have only had like a very small market share, but they always wanted to have more. So what has changed? Like, why would I suddenly consider using Bing instead of Google all of a sudden? Like, wait a minute, who are you? Did they suddenly become good? And like, what is the secret behind Bing's improvement? Well, there have been two things that have been happening. Both have to do with ChatGPT. One is you will see when you visit Bing.com and the other one is in the background, working internally behind the engines, turning the wheels and making sure that Bing is actually now able to understand websites much better. So what Bing has done, and it has a really deep integration of this feature into Microsoft Edge, it has basically taken ChatGPT and has included it into its search results. So now when you're searching, you will have still on your left side, you have like the traditional search results, just like on Google. But on the right side, you want will have like a chat prompt where ChatGPT will basically answer whatever you typed in to your search field. The search fields are not, not much bigger. It's not just limited to one line. You can write entire text blobs and, and then Bing will be able to generate some output for that. And it's really, really good. When I'm searching for something, like for example, I might look for a recipe on like how to make a keto friendly pizza, it will actually write me like a nice short summary of like a few paragraphs and it will give me some ideas for certain recipes I might want to try out and like what kind of ingredients would work well together. What is the some of the different bases I could use for my uh, dough replacement. And it's just like really great. Like I can really see how this could be like the default output at some point in time that you don't even see the websites anymore. You're just getting like this summary instantaneously and then you can ask for the questions. Now, one thing I really like about the, imp the way Bing has implemented this, basically every single sentence the ChatGPT version of Bing is generating is linked to the source and they really pay a lot of the attention to accurately linking and crediting the original piece of content where they got this information from. You can click on any sentence and it will tell you which is the source. You can click on it and it will open the article where it got this information from. One of the biggest differences between the Bing's version of ChatGPT and the uh, actual ChatGPT is that the real ChatGPT on openai.com is limited. It has a knowledge cap of in 2021 and is not capable of searching the internet. While Bing's version is basically looking at the top 
top 10 results. It opens all the websites. It will read through all the content. It will then build a summary based on the content on the most recent result that guarantees that you have up to date knowledge. There is no gap that you get 2023, 2024, 2025, whatever year you're in. If it happened yesterday, Bing will be able to know about it and ChatGPT will be able to update their information accordingly. So it's really, really cool to, if you rely on it, like for accurate changes, like if I, I ask ChatGPT, who is the CEO of Twitter, it will not be Elon Musk. You can try it yourself. It's basically like the cutoff point 2021. That's really exciting. Well, like even better, if you have this chat option available, you can actually talk to ChatGPT inside of Bing. You can ask follow-up questions. You might, hey, what could I do if I don't have this in green? What are some good substitutes? And it will then perform follow-up searches and complete like fill out the information I say hey if you don't have like let's say uh, almond flour it will give you some alternative recipes and it might not be necessarily from the 10 results that you just said it will perform some hidden searches in the background to get the additional information it doesn't has yet so it will actually just create like new search prompts so in, instead of you sitting down and typing in 20 questions into google and then like, figuring out like what you actually need you will just stay in your window and you're just having like a friendly one-to-one -one conversation with chat gpt and bing and it will do perform searches in the background and becomes your own personal assistant that gathers all the information that you need for whatever task you want to perform. Even cooler, if you give Microsoft Edge access or give the ChatGPT feature access to sharing your browser content, I'm going to make another video about this to make sure that you subscribe to my channel how to do that. It can actually interact with the current URL that you just opened. It can be like a website, it can be a PDF document, and then you can open a chat prompt and you can ask ChatGPT instead of Microsoft Ash about the content. You can ask it, give me like a summary of this article. What are some of the key takeaways that I need to know? You can ask it some question because maybe this is like an 8,000 word article and then you don't have the time to, because you're looking for a specific information or you could use the search feature or you could just type in your question into Bing and it will able to read the entire text within like seconds and then give you like certain answers. It might even take some of the information from the current article or PDF document and it can again perform background searches and combine it with additional knowledge that it has figured out like through internet searches. This is so powerful. I've used that feature a lot like in the last couple of days and it's so useful. It saves you so much time. It really speeds up your workflow. If you're just looking for some very specific information and you just have to go through thousands of words of text in order to find like specific details you're looking for, this is like a godsend. It really saves you time. It's really, really, really helpful. And I can really see how this is gonna change the way we do internet searches. Like, like the way we used to Google in the past, that's going to be a thing of the past. And of course, it has all the other features of ChatGPT. You can ask it to perform like a writing task. You can ask it to write like an email, maybe create like a job application letter based on some information that you're submitting. The input prompt is a little bit more limited than uh, it is at ChatGPT. But if you have like a generic task, you're looking for like a template and then just ha having some follow up interaction with it in order to improve it, you can just do that. It's really, really powerful and has basically all the ChatGPT features built into to the platform. Now at the moment, it's a little bit slow, like it types it out word for word, which gives you like the illusion that there was like someone actually like texting you. But I could see like in a, in a couple of years, like or even like a couple of months, they're going to speed up this process uh, dramatically or just give you a choice. If you want to have instant output of everything, it's going to be just there. Like uh, this is just like a matter of time to optimize the systems, like get the most out of this, like as getting like more powerful server and like hardware to run those AI systems in the background is all going to be way, way faster. The other thing thing that I'm super excited about when it comes to Bing is what is Microsoft actually doing in the background and they haven't really like revealed all of it but you can bet an eye this is what's going to happen behind the scene because of this immense weakness that they only are able to literally understand keywords that I can't understand synonyms and like other ways of explaining the same idea and like putting one and one together and saying hey those are all part of the same content classes Microsoft is going to use the chat GPT technology to parse its website content It's going to process all all websites and it's going to use this advanced language model to really understand what every website is all about and it can all link them together. No longer do you have to worry about like optimizing your content for SEO. You can just continue writing really user-friendly articles that are easy to read and Bing will just understand it and that will over time it will probably take like a couple of years until this is fully rolled out through all websites in the world but it will
will eventually be able to completely replace the current database, link everything together to understand the entire internet. And just think about when we're at that point, how much power and knowledge you're going to have in one engine. You have essentially a language model which has read every single website on the internet, every single book, and it can pull together information from all of those sources. This is going to fast track any research imaginable. It might be able to create new knowledge to draw some conclusions of information. There is gaps between them so far that no one would naturally come to a conclusion, hey, this is something that belongs together. But the OpenAI ChatGPT model might be able to to draw those information together and give you insights about new knowledge, make new discoveries that people haven't thought about yet. Now, I'm really excited about this because I want to see some competition. Like I want to have a couple of really good search engines on the market and make no mistake, Bing might just be like the first doing using this technology. There will be others. There will be finally some search engine competition because of those language models. It's not going to be limited to Google. This is going to be limited to like how many uh, resources can you put behind like processing the entire internet and then those language models are going to be equally powerful. So that's going to be really exciting. We're going to see a lot more competition in the search engine space. To me, it's kind of like funny because every time like there is a monopoly like on the market, everyone thinks it's going to be last forever. In the past, people thought Internet Explorer would last forever. Then people thought Chrome is going to be last forever. Then people thought Facebook is the be all and all. <laughs> Everything will eventually crumble if you don't keep up with the current trends. And ChatGPT is just here like to just shake up the market and like break everything. Like everyone has to start from scratch again. I'm super excited about this, especially like the potential of having different search engines. So it's not just like based on Google. So we can also run ads on different platforms. That's going to be really, really exciting. Now Bing has been like a search engine for a really long time and has been like having like a small percentage market share over the years, but it finally might be able to shift the needle and like take away some of Google's market power and like market share. And I'm super excited about this. In fact, I'm not the only one. Google is panicking about this. Google has recently raised the alarm bell to red alert and called emergency meetings to quickly come up with like a, an answer to chat GPT. Now, Google, of course, has been working on uh, their own language models in the background for many years, but really chat GPT and open eyes like surprised them. Like they didn't expect this to come out this quickly. They thought like, oh, we can do it like nice and slowly and come out like in maybe five to years time or so. Now open AI and Microsoft are in the driver's seat and Google is reacting. So recently they released a press release and they announced Google Bart, like their own version. They said like at the moment, they're going to soon release like the main version of the language model. The more advanced version is going to take a few more years or months, who knows, but it's just rushed out like in panic. Nobody was prepared to give any presentation. In fact, when they recently tried to do a presentation, everything went wrong. The supposed live demo fell apart because someone forgot the phone where this demo was running, forgot. And then they had to rely on a video to show how it would work. The output didn't look so impressive and it actually created a couple of like mistakes and made some wrong statements that were untrue. But yeah, if you're trying to rush things through, things like this going to happen. I'm making a bit of a joke of Google right now, but like I wouldn't count them out. Like they have a lot of money. They can put more money behind this technology and have some of the smartest people working in their company. So they're definitely going to be able to catch up at some point. It's going to be really exciting times. Like other platforms are also working on their own language models. I know Meta is working on their own language models. There's a couple of really cool open source platforms that are working on their own language models. And it's going to be a really exciting time. It's going to really change the world how we know it and you are right here seeing it unfold in front of yourself and your own eyes. Now back to Edge, it actually has developed quite a bit since they first switched to Chromium and I was really quite impressed because it has a lot of features now that Google Chrome doesn't have. It has an incredible text-to-speech engine with their own unique voices which are much better than Apple's voices or Google's text-to-speech in my opinion. How to start a successful YouTube channel in 2023. Written by Tim Queen. Why should you start a YouTube channel? You know what? There are literally thousands of future content creators thinking about starting a YouTube channel in your niche right now. I recommend that you begin your journey regardless of whether you think you are ready or not. 
So you can use that to read out any article and it's quite smart to actually read out the text that you want it to read out and it does a really really good job in pronouncing everything like correctly. So I really love this. If you have like a long article you don't want to read it as 8000 words just press the play button and continue doing something else like have a coffee and just process it like an audiobook in the background or listening to a podcast. So I really love this feature read aloud powerful feature really cool about Microsoft Edge. It has also some of uh, some other cool features for e-commerce for example I recently noticed like making a first purchase on Microsoft Edge it has built in coupons and actually saved me to save 20% because when I went to the checkout it suggested a specific coupon code and I didn't even like know about this and just like this saved some money really cool it's a bit like a uh, PayPal honey but it's just built into the browser it also gives you the choice you can have vertical or horizontal tabs horizontal like how you know it from Google Chrome but you can also have them on the left side which is really cool it takes a bit of getting used to it but like it's really nice to have the option to choose between the two systems if you want it also has built in apps this is like a really cool feature where you can just like take your favorite apps and have them in your sidebar for quick access and this really makes it like uh, working like in different workflows really really easy and like intuitive a built in chat GPT obviously one of the best features and a deep integration that you can just uh, open like any website or document press the sidebar button and get chat GPT and have it as your personal assistant uh, let it read the entire article text and then ask it question about it just one of my favorite uh, and probably one of the, the main reason why I'm con going to continue using Edge for the foreseeable future because it just saves me so much time, so makes my life so much easier. A couple of other features I really like about Edge, quite a number of additional security features that I don't see in Google Chrome, which I really like. As a sidebar where you can have like some common tools like dictionary, calculator, or translator at your fingertip with just like two clicks. It has some really intuitive built in web capture, like screen capture, where you can capture the entire website, save it as an image, or even like draw it. It is very intuitive workflow of course you can do that in Google Chrome too but it usually takes installing like an extension or taking a screenshot putting this into your graphic application and like drawing some stuff on top of this but like in, in Microsoft Edge this is just built and it's really cool another really cool feature is that it, it knows probably like that most people like have like some prejudices against being so what it allows you to have like some sidebar search where you can perform the same search in Bing and another search engine of your choice like for example you could have like search in Bing and run the sidebar in Google so you can see both search results at the same time so you're not really missing out on anything like if you feel the search results on Bing are not enough and ChatGPT is not really helping you enough you can still have the Google results there at the same time or any other search engine other than Google that you want to have in your sidebar you can even search for like two or three additional search engines at the same time I'm obviously just started using Microsoft Edge and Bing again so I'm just like a beginner figuring this out as I'm going along but if you are interested like in me making a follow-up video about this where I'm comparing Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge side by side or Google and Bing then please let me know in the comments I'm really interested in like learning your feedback if that would be something you might be interested in now, of course if you're interested in ChatGPT and other AI tools I'm going to create a lot more content about this so this is going to be one of the main focuses of my channel going forward so if you're interested in those topics definitely make sure that you hit the subscribe button turn the notification bell on smash the like button to let the algorithm know that this is like a video that you want to see more of you can check out some of my training courses in my Tim Queen University. If you want to have some really in-depth courses and masterclasses about different topics, I just recently recorded a masterclass about how to use ChatGPT to create like a content strategy for LinkedIn, how to create your own special prompts so you can actually create usable posts on autopilot that really would work for an audience and would allow you to attract the right people. So if that's interesting, check this out below. Um, I'm going to put both links in the description to the pinned comment below. That's all I have for you today. I see you soon. Bye.